As of 2020, there are currently seven coasters around the world that have a height or drop between 300 feet and 400 feet, and I have had the opportunity of doing all of them. Today, I'll be ranking them from my least favorites to my favorites. You'll find five of these coasters in North America, one is in Spain, and the other is in Japan. And because of their height or drop in the 300 foot range, they've adapted the term Giga Coasters, which was a term that was coined by Cedar Fair. And there's been some speculation of whether a Giga Coaster has to be a complete circuit or it has to have a lift till, not a launch. But for the sake of this video, as long as it's between 300 and 400 feet, I included it. And this is how I rank them. In last place, we have Steel. Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan. And real quick, none of these coasters are bad. I think the reason why Steel Dragon ranked last for me, even though it is the longest coaster in the world, it left me kind of underwhelmed. And not to mention, it has B&M trains on a Morgan track, so it's just a very odd sensation. It's an out and back layout with this huge twister section at the far end, lots of bunny hills that complete the course on the way back. And frankly, I think the coolest part about this coaster is just how huge it is. The ride is absolutely a spectacle to look at, but something had to come in last, and so for me, it was Steel Dragon. At number six, we have Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This was the first ever B&M Giga Coaster. There are now currently three around the world. Leviathan may be a bit of a shorter ride, but it still has some fun elements. Great first drop, as with all of these coasters. Nice speed hill, and in general, Leviathan has a focus on speed instead of, say, airtime. Very smooth, looks great towering over the front gate. It really makes a great first impression when you get to Canada's Wonderland. At number five, we have the latest gig coaster to open around the world, Orion at Kings Island. Now I was kind of going back and forth on this and Leviathan. To me, they're fairly similar. The reason why I put Orion just barely ahead is because it has a few more unique elements, in particular the wave turn, that last sideways hill right before the brake run, and a pretty intense helix. In terms of length, it is almost identical to Leviathan. So yes, another shorter ride experience, but I'll tell you what, this is by far the best themed Giga Coaster out of all of these. Cedar Fair really did a nice job with that. Dead set in the middle is Red Force at Ferrari Land at Port Ventura Resort in Spain. And this was by far the hardest ride to place out of all of these because it is the most different. This ride does not have a lift hill. It is a launch coaster in the style of King Dakka, Top Thrill Dragster, Stealth, Accelerator, any of those. While both King Dakar and Top Thrill Drags are over 400 feet. This one sits at 367 feet. Instead of a hydraulic launch, it features an LSM launch. As a result of the coaster having to go straight up and straight down, it is also the fastest coaster on this list, clocking in at 112 miles an hour. It's very fun. It's easily the shortest coaster on this list, simply because of the style of ride that it is. But it's very fun. It's very cool. It looks fantastic. And frankly, the only reason why it doesn't come in higher is because the other rides ahead of it are a bit more of a full package. But Red Force is still absolutely awesome. So now we're at our top three. At number three, we have Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This was the original Giga Coaster. A lot of people like to give this ride crap, saying it's overrated, and the irony is, it's almost become so overrated that it's underrated. Millennium Force is a good ride. It is not the best coaster in the world, but it's definitely got some great moments. The lift hill right along the water, unbelievable. By far the best lift hill maybe of all time. Fantastic first drop, intense overbank coming out of that. Some nice airtime moments. I'd say the middle of the coaster is where the ride starts to suffer a little bit. Some people like to use the word boring to describe that. I personally do not. But even after all this time, 20 years later, Millennium Force still holds up as a very popular coaster among the public and is still a reason to this day why people come to Cedar Point. At number two, we have Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. And this is a ride that sometimes gets divisive opinions. If you are not a fan of intense, fast-paced coasters, this is not a ride for you. This is by far the most different of the traditional Giga Coasters. Intimidator 305 does not focus on airtime. It is almost exclusively speed and crazy transitions. It is also the most intense out of all the Giga Coasters. The first turn after the first drop causes a massive gray out, sometimes leading riders to blacking out, but there really is nothing else like it. And you know, if this coaster weren't at my home park, this would probably be my favorite coaster on this list, but the thing is, I've ridden this more than literally any other ride in the world, so I'm very much used to Intimidator 305. But I tell you what, I love bringing people on this coaster for their first time because they are always amazed by it and can't get enough of the attraction. And that leaves only one coaster left to take the number one spot, and that is Fury 325 at Carowinds. The reason why I've put this at number one is because this is, in short, 
a perfect ride. And I don't mean that as in, oh, there's nothing that they could have done to make the ride better. What I mean is the ride is the full package. It has a little bit of everything. It is a long ride, has great airtime, speed. It's very smooth. Some really fun elements. Stays low to the ground. Looks great. Fantastic color scheme. It's a beautiful ride. And it's re-rideable. The same cannot really be said for Intimidator 305. That coaster, you almost need to take a break after a couple rides because it's so intense. Fury, you could lap it all day. There's a reason why Fury's been voted the number one coaster in the world for several years in a row, which is why it is my number one giga coaster in the world. But I want to hear from you guys if you agree with my thoughts and opinions. If you've also had the chance of doing all seven, I'd love to hear how you rank them. If you've only had the chance to do a couple, or maybe even one, that's okay. Let me know what you think of them. Of course, if you're new to the channel, I'd love if you could subscribe. I do coaster videos from theme parks all across the world. If you're interested in seeing more, I have a playlist full of other countdowns and lists that I've done. So be sure to go check those out. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.